Hi there, Banggood sent me another thing for review. It came a bit unexpected and in a plain box, so I had opened it already and this is the unbox reenactment, so to say. I do not get paid for the video, but I do get to keep the thing, so I mark it as promotion. But as you know, that doesn't stop me from giving you an unbiased review. Despite the telescopic antenna, it's not another radio, but the other side of it, an FM transmitter. There is no documentation whatsoever in the box. I copied the specs from the Banggood website. It goes by the catchy name of Frequency Modulation Emitter and sends out an FM stereo signal selectable between 76 and 108 MHz. The frequency can be selected either in 1 MHz or in 100 kHz steps. If you do the math, that means a total of 320 different frequencies are possible and the unit simply remembers the last one selected. This is what they mean with memory function. Transmitting power can be selected in 10 steps between 10 mW and 0.5 watts, and the unit takes a standard 3.5 mm jack as input for the stereo audio signal. Power is from 5V USB-C. Now to be clear, I believe in many countries you are not allowed to simply start broadcasting on FM. That would be what they used to call a pirate radio station. Moreover, with 0.5 watts output, this thing has quite a range. The blurb on the website says 2000 meters, which would be about 1.2 miles, but some users' comments seem to suggest distances of 6 kilometers or 3.7 miles and more is possible. In my case, I will use this only for lab testing of FM radios, always on the lowest power setting and without connecting a proper antenna, and I'm limiting the scope of the review to that, so no range tests are similar. With that out of the way, on the rear you find three connectors. The socket for a 3.5mm audio jack, a USB-C port for power and the antenna connector. The front has a small LCD display, two buttons up and down and a red LED. The extreme zoom makes the slightly recessed LCD appear a bit out of focus while the front panel is in focus but I think it's still readable. A 3 second press on the up button switches the unit into the mode to select the output power. P01 is the lowest value of 10 mW, while P10 is the highest level of 500 mW. There is no antenna connected, but I think it's still best to wind the power down quickly. An open antenna socket will reflect power back into the transmitter, which may not be too healthy for the circuit. When the red LED is off, the up-down button changes the frequency in 100 kHz steps. A long press on the down key turns the LED on and now the frequency step is 1 MHz. Another long press on the down key turns the LED back off and now the step size is back to 100 kHz. A few seconds after an input, the LED suddenly flashes a few times. This is a sign that the change has been stored as the new setting and will be restored after power up. This is as far as the user interface goes. Select power level and select frequency. That's it. Let's have a look inside. The housing consists of the usual two U-shaped aluminum profiles held together with the four screws each in the front and rear panels. Removing the upper screws on both front and rear allows lifting the top part of the enclosure. The large chip is a TM1621D which is just an LCD driver. Above it is the microcontroller STM32G030 F6P6 which uses a 32-bit ARM Cortex-MCU, 32 kilobytes of flash memory and 8 kilobytes of SRAM. The GH16D is a voltage regulator to produce 3.3 volts from 5 volts USB. All the FM capabilities are courtesy of the QN8027 chip, but before having a closer look, there are two more transistors which I presume form the power amplifier, but I have not found any datasheets for them. The underside of the PCB has no further components. The QN8027 could do a lot more than what the transmitter's user interface offers, which is a bit of a shame, but then I'm looking at it as a test tool and not for something to send MP3s to a car radio. For start, it also supports 50 kHz step size, which might be important to test receivers meant to operate in certain countries. 
The chip supports a choice of two audio pre-emphasis time constants, but we don't know which one has been selected by the programmers of this unit. Radio Data System, or RDS, as well as the RBDS variant is supported, but sadly there's no way of entering data, like station IDs and such. For testing purposes, it would have been nice if the programmers had at least preset it with some text, but maybe anonymity is higher valued if you choose to go on the air with this transmitter. A control interface via the USB-C port would be handy, but it's not implemented. On my computer, the USB port of the transmitter is just taking power and not recognized as anything else, like a serial port, for example. Anyway, let's do some tests. If you remember from the review of the V115 radio, but now I can test this more definitively. This is a file I made containing just me left, saying left, right, right and both to both. test for stereo. Left, right, both. Left, right, both. The transmitter is running on 108 MHz with a tiny white piece of wire in the antenna port at the lowest right. power. The audio file you just saw is playing into the audio input of the transmitter and the little S14732 radio I reviewed a while ago picks it up showing the stereo indicator. Switching over to the V115, it receives the signal with no problems. I turned off the S14732 and hit record on the V115. Right, both, left, both. and then stopped it. Left, the V115 right. starts playing back the recording, right. but it also shows the file both. name RAT006. Let's look at it in Audacity. Right. And there you have both. it. All audio left. bursts are now identical right. on both tracks. Both. This confirms my finding left. that the V115 right. FM radio both. does not support stereo. Left. The tiny SA spectrum analyzer is showing the range from 100 to 110 megahertz. The solitary peak at 108 megahertz is coming from the FM transmitter. I deliberately connected the tiny SA over the air, so to say, to not overload it. The signal from the transmitter with its tiny wire stump for antenna less than half a meter away is just minus 70 dB. Zooming further in by putting the 108 MHz in the middle and a span of 300 kHz is much better. We can clearly see peaks of some subcarriers. It becomes even more clearer when I turn the audio input to the transmitter off. The central peak is of course at 108 MHz and the picture is symmetrical so it's enough to look at only one side. Measuring roughly with a cursor, the first peak after the center is at about 108. 202 megahertz in other words 20 kilohertz to the right this is the 19 kilohertz pilot tone indicating a stereo transmission then there is a much smaller peak at 39.9 kilohertz to the right this is the 38 kilohertz carrier for part of the audio there are possibly some further tiny peaks but it's hard to tell at the end we have another large one at about 90 kilohertz wikipedia has this image which i'm borrowing here it's basically the right half of what I showed before. In other words, the 108 MHz line is at the most left. The frequency shown on the bottom must be understood as a relative to the base frequency. For example, if the base is 108 MHz, then 19 kHz is actually 108.019 MHz. And of course, there's the same happening on the other side, where frequencies are subtracted from the base frequency. The transmitter adds the left channel and the right channel audio and applies a bandpass to limit it to stay between 30Hz and 15kHz to protect the 19kHz pilot tone. This is what you see here in this box. For example, if the combined signal contains just a pure frequency of 1kHz, the 108MHz would become two lines, one of 108.001MHz and one of 107.999MHz. The combined signal of left plus right is what mono radios receive. The transmitter also subtracts the right signal from the left signal and the result of that is frequency modulated onto the 38kHz subcarrier. 
So if that contained, for example, a pure 2 kilohertz component, it would show as a line that would be plus minus 2 kilohertz away from the 38. So 36 kilohertz on the lower side and 40 kilohertz on the upper side. The stereo receiver uses the left plus right signal and the left minus right signals to recover the original left and right audio signals. The normal spacing of FM radios is 100 kHz, so there is still some room and this is used by various additional services like RDS and RBDS at 57 kHz, but at a tiny amplitude and possibly more services as you see here. I try to reproduce the spectrum you just saw, again with no audio. 108 MHz is on the far left and the span is 100 kHz. We have the pilot tone of 19 kHz the peak for the left-right audio at roughly 38 kHz. The next noticeable peak is at roughly 71 kHz, which could be something in what the Wikipedia drawing calls direct band. There seems to be no trace in between for RDS, but that could be because it's tiny and quite possibly in the noise. And finally, at about 90 kHz, a subcarrier for ORDOS, but I have no idea what this is used for and why the FM transmitter puts it out, but all in all, it seems to do its job. It occurred to me that the S14732 has a stereo indicator, but I had not actually verified that stereo comes out from the headphone socket. So I hooked it up to an amp and speakers. Right. Both. Left. Right. Both. Left. Yes, right. it's stereo, but Both. left and right are swapped in the left. S1473 right. headphone output. My test track and the transmitter made this obvious. The only reason it sounds correct now is that I swapped the speaker wires. And yes, I tested the transmitter with other stereo radios and also the little amp setup and neither swaps channels. Well, the thought occurred to me, what if I feed in two sign signals on left and right and start shifting the phase? Since the transmitter is sending left plus right for mono, the effect should be that at 0 degrees phase shift, the mono left plus right is strong, but at 180 degrees, the mono signal should be 0. For the 38 kHz subcarrier, the transmitter is doing left minus right, so at 0 degrees, that's identical signals, the left minus right should be 0, while at 180 degrees, it should be strong. I don't really expect a stereo receiver to be affected because in either case you end up with a 2L and 2R signal, but a mono receiver should be screwed. This would be a neat way of instant testing if a radio is mono or stereo, regardless of the number of speakers. Strangely, as soon as I started to shift the phase from zero, the audio of the S1473 got weaker and at 180 kHz it had faded completely, but only for a moment then it recovered. Not sure why, but this was reproducible. I turned the amp volume down and got an old analog mono AM FM radio for comparison. That behaved as expected. With the increasing phase shift, the tone faded and was completely gone at 180 degrees. It only came back after I started reducing the phase shift back towards zero. The V115 behaved the same way. The frequency modulation emitter is actually a useful test tool if you don't have a signal generator that can do stereo. Its obvious main purpose is not as a test tool but to broadcast, but it's up to you what and how you use it. If you are interested in getting the transmitter, I leave a link in the description. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. And maybe consider becoming a Patreon, that would really help this channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.